It was a day of celebration for the Reeds family. Their youngest of two was turning ten. They were notorious for holding big parties where almost every relative would attend, but this year they decided to keep things smaller. The youngest, Hannah, was super excited to finally be turning the age where the double digits begin. So excited that she was prancing around the house and annoying her older brother Ian. Ian was your typical 15-year-old, hormonal, full of energy, and looking forward to turning 16. He had been sitting on the living room couch when his sister jumped over the side and landed next to him. She just squealed that she was finally turning 10 and just as quickly jumped up from the couch and ran out of the living room. I don't understand her sometimes, it's just her turning 10, he muttered to himself. She's finally in the double digits Ian, let her be excited. It's her special day after all, their mother said as she walked into the living room, overhearing her son's words. Ian jumped, not expecting his mom to walk in on him and embarrassed that she heard him. He didn't respond to his mother's words and turned back around to focus watching whatever was playing on the television. Their mom had walked into the dining room, adjacent to the living room and grabbed a few things off the table to take out into the backyard with her. Honey, mind helping me carry out some of this stuff? When we're finished you can go back to watching TV, his mom asked politely as she walked by, carrying a couple boxes of plastic eating utensils. With a loud groan, Ian stood up and turned off the television. He walked over to the dining room table and grabbed what was left before following his mom out the sliding glass door leading to the backyard. He closed his eyes as he stepped outside to avoid being blinded by the sunlight. When he figured it was safe, he opened them and looked around the backyard. It was a fairly big yard, enough for a big swimming pool and a trampoline. They were the only two things a 15 and 10 year old needed to keep themselves entertained. Ian's parents had set up a couple picnic tables with bright blue tablecloths clamped down to each one. In fact, just about every party favor was a shade of blue, which was Hannah's favorite color. The wind started to pick up as Ian and his mother walked down the couple steps of the porch, blowing bits of pool water at them. Ian's mom gasped from the touch of the cold water and hurried her pace to set the boxes down on one of the tables, leaving Ian behind to keep being blasted by the water. Hurry up Ian, don't get those boxes wet, she yelled from the tables. Coming as fast as I can, Ian responded as he quickened his pace, setting the stuff down right next to the other boxes. Ian's mom thanked him and gave him a peck on the cheek, much to his dismay. He rubbed his cheek hoping that his mom wasn't wearing any lipstick. Checking his hand he let out a sigh of relief as he was seeing no signs of the stuff. Ian asked his mom if he was needed for anything else and when she shook her head no he took off back inside. She just continued setting things up and making sure nothing would go wrong. Hannah was waiting for Ian in the dining room as he walked in. She had switched into her swimsuit and asked him if he had seen her special camera. Ian had no idea what his sister was talking about, she had never owned a camera before, and so he questioned her about it. She explained that she had come across this camera that morning, sitting on her desk, and now she couldn't find it. Ian really wasn't in the mood to listen to her ramble about some imaginary camera and told her that she misplaced it and to leave him alone. She just frowned and called him a butthead before walking past him and going outside. Ian shrugged and walked to the living room and sat down on the couch, checking his phone for any texts he might have missed. Much to his surprise he had one text from his girlfriend, Riley, telling him that she'd be over in 20 minutes to hang out. Ian just smiled. His little sister had actually thought of him by inviting Riley to her birthday party. He thought over how lucky he was to be dating Riley. She was the co-captain of the cheerleading squad, while he preferred to avoid most contact sports. It was a rather long story that Ian liked to keep to himself, which was perfectly fine with his girlfriend. 
Lost in this train of thoughts, Ian had dozed off a bit, only to be woken up by the sound of the doorbell going off. I got it, he yelled to anyone still in the house, as he got up from the couch and walked over to the front door. He looked through the little window at the top of the door and saw it was Riley. Without a moment's hesitation, he opened the door and greeted her. Riley gave him a big hug and walked inside while he closed the front door and followed her to the living room. As they walked into the living room, Ian's dad walked by and greeted Riley and gave Ian the usual no funny business talk. Ian just rolled his eyes, as usual, when his father saw them together. He knew he meant well, but sometimes it was just annoying, like right now. His father just rustled his dark brown hair and told him that they'd be out in the back getting things set up if they needed them. Once he was sure his dad had left and gone outside, the two hurried over to the staircase that led to the basement. The basement was their usual hangout spot, which meant they would be making out for the next few hours. Ian's parents had set up a family room in their cozy little finished basement, fit with a couch and a decent-sized television where Ian had most of his gaming systems hooked up to. The two hurried over to the couch pushed up against the back wall and sat down close to each other to start their make-out session. Riley was a bit nervous. She always was when they were about to make out. Ian brushed a few strands of her long brunette hair out of her face and leaned in close, mere centimeters away from her face. He always liked to drag on the anticipation, mostly because it drove Riley wild. Just as he was about to lock lips with her, they were interrupted by a sudden flash of light which could only come from a camera. I found it, Allison, giggled Hannah who had just taken a picture of the two. Ian looked over at his sister, wondering who the hell Allison was. Before he even had the chance to ask, his sister had run upstairs and most likely outside because the party was probably starting. He looked over at Riley who looked strange. She looked younger, but he couldn't really tell because his hair was growing and getting into his face. Uh. Riley what is going on? Ian asked not so sure himself. I, I don't know. You look different, it's like you're getting older, Ian, Riley replied, terrified and finding words difficult to say. Ian was about to say something else as he stood up from the couch and suddenly doubled over in pain, clutching his stomach. His waist had cinched inward as he felt his hips widen to larger proportions. The sudden change had made his shorts ride up till they were almost painfully tight in the crotch. It didn't help that he could feel his boxers being dug in between the crack of his butt. He grabbed a hold of both his boxers and shorts and tried to pull them downward to relieve some of the pressure and managed to do so by a mere half inch. It wasn't the relief he was hoping for but it was enough for now. While Ian was focused on trying to relieve the pressure directed at his crotch, he failed to notice his hair had finally stopped growing. By that time it was shoulder length and blonde highlights suddenly appeared throughout his new locks. He straightened back up, making his hair fly directly into his face. At first he didn't know what to think and just let his frizzy hair cover his entire face, until he realized he couldn't see a damned thing through his thicker hair. Trying to decide on what to do, he briefly thought about what he saw in movies or TV shows, something about putting his head down so all his hair just hung there and quickly whipping his head back so his hair would be out of his face. After having the brief thought, he decided to give it a shot. It had taken about three tries before it worked enough for his liking. In between tries, he felt like his face had an itch that needed to be scratched. The worst part, it wasn't just in one spot either, it felt like his entire face was itching. What Ian was perceiving as an itch was actually his entire face softening to a more feminine look. His eyebrows had thinned down from their former thickness and the eyes got slightly bigger as the eyelashes grew and thickened. His nose had shrunk down to be more proportional with his new look, while his thin boyish lips thickened as they plumped up a bit of cherry lip balm covering them. 
The new taste on his lips brought on a new distraction as he felt the itching sensation fade. Ian took a deep breath as he suddenly felt like his gut was punched by a world champion boxer. His rib cage and the organs they encased shrunk down, taking his breath away abruptly. As his ribs shrunk, his stomach had flattened so it just looked like he was rather skinny. Ian lifted up his shirt, now way too big for his shrunken frame, and saw just how skinny he was. No words would leave his new plump lips as he just looked down at himself. His lips were stuck in an O shape. His boxers and shorts were only hanging onto his lower half due to his hips, but that soon changed as he felt like air was being pumped into both but cheeks. Wondering what was going on, he turned his head to get a better look. Much to his dismay, his once flat but had expanded till he had what some referred to as a bubble butt. Without much hesitation, he grabbed both cheeks and gave them a squeeze to confirm that they were real. The sensation of his but being grabbed almost made him jump. Any body hair that he had, which was mostly on his legs, had disappeared as if he had just shaved them that morning. It left his legs looking silky smooth and he could have sworn his legs looked longer. Those thoughts soon changed as he felt pressure return to his crotch, this time in the form of a tugging sensation. The tugging had made his penis erect and throbbing as it felt like his testicles were about to explode. Rather than that, he found himself having an orgasm as gobs of his cum shot out, not only soaking his boxers but leaking into his shorts. The pleasurable sensation lasted for about 30 seconds. His testes had all but shriveled up, leaving nothing but an empty sack where they once were. The tugging on his member had increased as it slowly sank back into him, the tip shrinking down as it did so, forming what would now be his clit. The skin that was underneath had split and formed folds as the new plumbing set in, leaving behind a pair of soaking lips that could only belong to a female vagina. Now officially a she, Ian's brain was now on nuclear shutdown. His initial reaction was to reach down into his shorts, but when he looked over at Riley, he froze. Riley looked at Ian, completely transfixed. She was too mesmerized to look away or go for help. She smirked internally. Help? Who in the hell would believe me, she thought. She wanted to speak, to reassure her boyfriend that this was a trick, that it wasn't real, but she couldn't open her mouth. The words would not form. The longer she stared at him, the weirder she felt, until she couldn't take the feeling anymore. She looked down at herself. That tingling feeling had started in her feet and legs and seemed to spread to her hands and arms, without touching the other parts of her body. Suddenly, everything started shrinking. Riley felt herself get shorter and shorter as her legs and feet shrank. Without warning, everything above her legs started to go, too. Her hips pressed in and her torso shrank. As her hands and arms followed suit, her breasts disappeared and her chest continued to morph pain started welling up inside her. Lastly, her head and face came down a few sizes and gave her a great headache. Her hair had already wiggled itself back into her skull, so only a decent amount of soft, fuzzy hair lay up top. Pain seared through her body and she started to cry. Her organs shifted around to make room as they shrunk to fit her tiny body. Her brain shrank, as well, which caused it to destroy all of her old memories and replace them with new ones. What was left in Riley's place was a very grumpy baby girl. The clothes she had been wearing had covered her tiny frame as she squirmed, wanting to be set free. Ian just watched, her hand covering her mouth as she tried to hold back a scream. Her mind was drawing blanks and just couldn't process what she had just watched. That was soon to change as she grabbed her head as pain shot across her skull. A massive headache was coming on. She was unaware that this headache was forming new memories to be combined with her current ones. Allison. 
The name popped into her brain as she felt a bit of relief from the grip of her headache. The lessening pain made it easier for her to go to the bathroom, she wanted to get a better look at herself. Flipping the switch and after being temporarily blinded, she was able to finally see how she looked. Wide-eyed and gasping, the young couldn't believe what she saw. It was quickly noted that she looked like her former self, if her former self had grown up as a girl rather than a boy. She also noticed that she didn't look like a 15-year-old girl. Her new memories that had mingled with the old told her that she had turned 19 this year. A sharp jab of pain crashed down in her skull. Allison. As she thought of the name, the pain would go away, but every time she tried to push it back, the pain would come again. Allison. Didn't Hannah call her that? She was positive of it and wrapped her mind around the name, immediately taking it as her own. Her current train of thought was interrupted as she lifted up her shirt and saw that her lower stomach was a bit pudgy, an obvious sign that she still had some baby fat left over. She then lifted it even higher so she could see her chest, which remained unchanged. Soon that would not be the case as she watched her nipples thicken as the areolas grew out and darkened. It was enough to make her drop her shirt and back up against the door. It started out as a tingling feeling, concentrated directly behind each nipple, and soon began changing to a warm pulsing sensation as her chest began to lift itself. The pulsing continuing as the skin began to sag and beginning to form a pair of noticeable breasts. Her baggy shirt made them invisible, but Allison sure noticed it though, as it was a sudden heaviness that just kept adding to itself. The pulsing sensation had ceased, giving Allison time to sigh with relief. Without a moment's hesitation, she lifted her shirt back up, only to be greeted by a pair of B-cup-sized breasts. Oh my god. I have boobs? And they're freaking huge, she thought as she stared at them, mesmerized. Those words had triggered one last change and the pulsing sensation returned. Only this time it felt different. It seemed like something was filling each of her breasts with each pulse. Allison couldn't exactly describe the feeling, but she noticed her new breasts were feeling heavier. In fact, both of her breasts were slowly filling up with breast milk, making them swollen and bigger. Soon Allison was able to see her nipples through her shirt and little wet spots were starting to form at the end. The sight made her jump back and she realized what a bad idea it was turning out to be. Her large breasts bounced all over under her shirt, staining it with droplets of milk. She let out a moan of pain as she was forced to use her hands to settle the bouncing, which brought sweet relief. Her fingers brushed up against her nips and sent a rather odd, yet pleasurable feeling through her body. If it weren't for her causing more milk to leak out, she would have started groping herself. Allison was breathing rather heavy and remembered that Riley was still in the family room. Riley was starting to cry. She was obviously fussy and in need of something, but that didn't stop Allison from having another quick glance at the mirror. As she left to go to the family room, other memories started swirling up in her brain. Lying there on the couch in a pink onesie was Riley, or a baby that was formerly Riley. Allison slowly approached the baby, scared that she might share the same fate as her former girlfriend. Her memories told her otherwise as her thoughts were clouded by them. In these memories, Allison had gotten pregnant from a one-night stand she had in her first year of college. She eventually had to drop out early in her pregnancy, due to the stress of school and raising a baby in a few months' time. She moved back in with her parents and little sister, which gave her some time to get back on her feet. Between then and now, she had been looking for jobs and cheap apartments to stay in. When her baby was born, Allison had decided to name the baby after a childhood friend who had passed away. Allison started to tear up as she looked down at the baby, knowing that it was in fact hers and that she was formerly her girlfriend. 
The baby had noticed her mommy and was doing the best she could to get her attention, which led to crying louder. Still scared, Allison sat down next to the baby and picked her up, cradling her. Riley had calmed down some and was just whimpering. Allison looked over and saw a pacifier sitting on the table next to her. Almost on instinct, she grabbed it and stuck it in Riley's mouth. The two just shared a quiet moment. Allison leaned back into the couch as she gently rocked Riley. She was trying to piece together the events that had led to her and Riley ending up like this. The only thing she could come up with was the camera that her sister had used to take a picture and even that sounded far-fetched. She let out a big sigh as she looked down at the pair of big brown eyes looking back up at her, which just made her smile. Allison, are you down there? asked her mom as she walked down the stairs. The party is still going on and the family would appreciate it if you two joined us. Allison jumped not expecting her mom to come downstairs. Riley had spit at her pacifier and looked like she was about to start crying. Allison's mom walked over as she put the binky back in Riley's mouth, hushing her as she rocked back and forth. Hey mom, yeah we'll be up in a few minutes. Riley is just being stubborn or something. Allison finally replied as she kissed her baby's forehead, trying to act as normal as possible. Well, not like that, Missy. Look at your shirt. Did you even put on a bra this morning? How many times have I told you, you can't go braless anymore, especially with those puppies, her mom said pointing to her big breasts. Allison's face turned a bright red, spanning from ear to ear. She didn't know what to say, but she knew her mom was right. Her mom held her hands out so she could take baby Riley and let her daughter go get changed. Riley just gurgled as she was handed off to her Grammy and was all smiles. Now scoot, Missy. Also it's getting close to one in the afternoon. You might want to feed Riley soon, said her mom as she helped her daughter up from the couch and pushed her towards the stairs. Okay, okay, I get it, Mom. But before I change, I need to ask you something. Does anything seem off to you? Like, do I seem different? She asked as she walked up the stairs. Other than you knowing that you should put on a nursing bra? And that you shouldn't be wearing the sperm donor shirt? Muttered Allison's mom as they walked over to her room. Allison didn't know how to respond to that last comment. Rather than asking, she let it go and walked over to her dresser to grab a bra and a shirt that fit. Browsing through her dresser she grabbed a dark blue nursing bra and a dark colored button-up shirt. Her mom left the room so she could change, telling her she'd be in the living room with Riley. Allison took off her milk-soaked shirt and threw it into the hamper full of other dirty clothes. She looked at the bra lying on the bed trying to figure out how to even put the thing on. When she was still Ian, he and Riley never made it past first base in fear that their parents would catch them in the act. So she paced around her room, just checking around what had changed. At one point she had to use her hands as a temporary bra to keep her breasts from painfully bouncing as she walked. Ugh. I should really put that stupid thing on. Allison said to herself as she walked back over and picked it up. She carried it with her over to a mirror that was hanging from the wall. Holding it up against her chest, she slid each arm through the straps and pulled it up, excited that it was working so far. She struggled hooking the thing behind her, but after several tries she managed it. All that was left was to fit each breast into each cup and she was set. With a bit of maneuvering and wiggling, they settled down in their positions quite comfortably. There was a huge sense of relief as the weights on her chest were now supported. She slipped on her blouse and walked out of the room. All right, Mom, I finished changing into my clothes, Allison said while walking into the living room. Good, 
just in time to feed your daughter and then you can come outside and join the rest of the family, was her mom's reply as she stood up and handed Riley back to her. Now holding her daughter, Allison looked really uneasy with the idea of having to feed the baby. She asked her mother if they had any baby formula, in which she just laughed and reminded her that she always wanted to breastfeed and that's exactly what she's done these past two months. It was exactly what Allison feared and it didn't help that Riley was starting to get fussy. Without much choice, Allison sat down on the couch and unbuttoned a few buttons at the top of her blouse. Riley was getting restless and Allison was trying her best to undo the flap on one of the cups. After finally getting it undone, she was really hesitant for what was to happen next. Do you need help again, Allie? I know you've been having issues lately getting Riley to attach, her mother asked as she walked over and sat down next to her. Here, let me help you. Allison flinched as she felt her mom's hands on hers, guiding Riley directly to her thick teat that was dribbling with milk. She desperately didn't want to breastfeed but she knew there was no going back at this point. When Riley was close enough, she latched on without an issue. Allison's nipple touched the top of her little mouth causing her natural sucking reflex to start. Allison closed her eyes and took a deep breath. The feeling was unlike anything she had ever felt before. A mix of pleasure, relief, and something else, a bond was forming between her and Riley. The kind of bond that only a mother and her baby can share. She kept her eyes closed and just reveled in the sensations and thinking about what on earth she was going to do. Even with the access of her new memories, she didn't know a thing about raising a child, even with the help of her family backing her along the way. Her thoughts had drifted from raising Riley to the camera. She knew she had to get her hands on that cursed thing, even if it meant being a jerk on her little sister's birthday. In fact, she was getting pumped up just thinking about it. She opened her eyes and was ready to jump off the couch, march outside, and demand that her sister give her the camera. That is until she looked down and saw the little bundle of joy still attached to her nip and sucking contently. Oh, Riley, what am I going to do with you? I love you so much. She found herself saying, not even realizing the words had even left her mouth. Those words, followed by a kiss on the top of the baby's head, made her smile. A surge of confidence had suddenly sprung out of the woodworks as she patiently waited for Riley to finish eating. That time came soon enough as Riley let go and started to get fussy, which Allison took as her needing to be burped. She lifted her baby girl so her head was over her shoulder and lightly patted her back until she heard the baby make a noise that sounded like a burp. Riley was no longer fussy, but rather sleepy, her little eyes heavy as she stared at her mommy. Allison just smiled and sung her a lullaby as she gently rocked her to sleep. When she was sure that the baby was asleep, Allison put her in the baby carrier that was in her room. As she was busy making sure she had what she needed before going outside to join the rest of her family, there was a knock at her bedroom door. She turned to see who it was only to be greeted by a bright flash of light. Sorry, Allison, I don't want any hard feelings between us, but I can't have you remembering that you used to be my older brother. That flash should have done the job and erased your old memories so the new ones can take over. I will apologize about what happened to Riley. She wasn't part of my plans, but you two have adjusted rather well, Hannah explained with a sadistic tone in her voice. Now if you'll excuse me sis, I need to get rid of this camera. Hannah just giggled to herself. Allison looked at her like she was talking on a sugar high and didn't really take in all that her little sister had said. It didn't matter much to her anyways, she had a baby that required her attention. As for where Hannah went, she walked out to the front yard, over by the trash can and casually tossed the camera into it. She made sure it was buried before closing the lid and walking back inside and going into the backyard. 
it was her birthday after all and you only turn ten once, she thought with a giggle. The camera, known to only a handful as the camera of change, had disappeared from underneath its trashy demise, off to find its new victim, whoever that would be.